These are the stories. My little girl, she's changing lives just by being herself. Of organizations and people making a difference. When you first tell someone about adaptive wheelchair boxing, it doesn't sound real. And empowering others. It saved my life. It saved my life. Across Canada. I scored my first goal in my first blind hockey game. In our community. Likes me like I'm. I feel like I didn't choose a piano; it chose me. Somehow it called me. And it's. I feel. I feel like we are one. For Wayne Riche, music is more than just a hobby. It helps us, like with special needs. To um, we have some of us don't have a voice, so they some of us take up music. But fortunately, I have a voice, and I can play a little music. <laughs> and sometimes we get stressed out, just like everybody else. And music is a good, uh, positive way to, to get the stress out. His music teacher and owner of Rock My House Music Center, Kevin Amen, understands just how powerful music is for the mind. Music, especially playing music, activates both sides of the brain, which is rare for a lot of things, right? Um, and so that's where I think where music becomes a therapy. It just stimulates all parts, especially drumming stimulates four-way coordination, right? So it just, um, so music for the mind, that's what it is, healthy mind, right? Learning is great for even dementia and stuff like that. So that's why I think music for the mind is definitely a perfect way to sum that up for sure. For Kevin, his love of music started at a young age. I think I started with guitar, and then I got drums, and then that was it. I was just, from there on, drums or whatever. I just love rock and roll, man, since I was a kid, right? I don't think it became therapy to me until a little bit later, right? Kevin grew up at a time when attention deficit disorder, or ADD, was not commonly diagnosed. Kevin's mom, Lydia Amon, bought him his first drum kit to keep what she considered a busy kid occupied. He was very, very busy growing up, and but we just I kept him busy, music, drums especially. And he would just like sit for hours because he would focus on something and then you couldn't get him away from it. The first little drum set we got him like that, he must have been four or five. But then for the lessons, it wasn't until he was older. It gave him something that he really loved. This is what it's about. Get all wet, get it all out of me. What started as something to keep a busy kid occupied became a complete love of music and a full-time career. As the owner of Rock My House, Kevin spends his days teaching and passing his love of music on to others. I just love being here, you know, I stay here most of the time anyway built a little bunky and uh, I can play piano, I can play whatever I want whenever I want, it's pretty good. I love doing what I do, I mean I work all the time, I don't have much of a life. One of Kevin's current students is Scarlett Cunningham, a local high schooler. Try and get your finger a little round to get the tip of it, right? Yeah. I know it's tough. I've only done about four lessons of the guitar but I've been here doing vocals for about a couple months now and it's hard, it's harder than it looks, but it's really fun. I like music lessons because music helps me with my anxiety and clearing my mind after a stressful day of school. I can focus on something so I don't have to overthink. Yeah, you got it. Get a little bit behind that fret, a little bit. There you go. The music sort of calms me down and makes me feel like, like I'm not where I was that made me have that anxiety. It makes me able to soothe and just takes me to somewhere where I'm not, like a good book. Very good. It's like, feels like home. Kevin understands music's ability to soothe anxiety firsthand. When he was younger and gaining success as a drummer in a band, his undiagnosed ADD sent him to a dark place. It's 
it's harder than it's it harder looks. It's harder than it looks, right? That was just pure depression and anxiety. But having the music and being able to play and go rehearse and write and whatever, that kept me busy, kept my mind off all the other stuff for sure. I just was eager to get on the drums to let some of this out. Eventually, the music alone was not enough. The faster it gets, the harder it gets. It got to a point where I was having such bad anxiety attacks, they would last like you know, two weeks. Like, and my heart would flutter, so I actually checked myself in. I said, I think I'm dying. I think I'm having a heart attack. I knew I needed it, because I was suicidal too. Like, I was, like, it, it was bad. It was really bad, really bad time. I was lucky to get through that time, and I'm glad I found a doctor for that, so. Get that pinky. And he told me it, they, they called it adult ADD, meaning it got really bad when you turned into an adult. I don't know, and then everything hits you. I just know that once I got the help and stuff, it was a night and day switch. Since receiving the proper medication and treatment, Kevin has worked hard to move past that chapter in his life. All right. Remember the one, two, three, four, the bottom row is your bass drum? Yeah. I mean, music got me through a lot of things. The drumming more especially. Anyone that has like ADD or frustrations or whatever, that's what you need, right? Unless you want to keep breaking a guitar or something, that's up to you. But one, two. Once he started Rock My House, Kevin found that the experience of dealing with his own issues made him a natural at connecting with students living with various disabilities. Excellent. It was almost like I've been doing it all my life. It didn't even matter. Instantly, I know what not to say or what not to push or lay back. I stress to them, you know, go home, make sure you practice a little bit because you'll enjoy it. You know, it, it'll it'll help you. You know, and I kind of put the, that in their ear. One, two, three, four. And teaching is in his blood. My mom was a teacher, a grade one teacher, right? So like I grew up in the classrooms with her. I was like just a kid myself, but I was always helping out. So I've, and it's gotta be just part of the thing is being able to relate. His mother, Lydia, agrees that Kevin's difficulties with ADD in the past make him a better teacher now. It must have been really difficult for him to have learned what he has learned. If you have something that um, you find difficult, and you see that in another person, then you're able to help that person so much more because you sort of have gone through it already. You're doing good. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're better and better every week. I'm so proud of him. And he's so good with the students and children and, and, and like it, oh, he can really relate to them. I develop a personal thing with them and they're all different and I have to develop that with them. So I have to adjust. I'm not the type of guy or the type of teacher to say, you know, sign something to say you're promising the practice and this and that. I give you the goods, that's up to you. And when they're here with that, I just like to see their happiness. That's the big dollar rim shot. That's how I break all my sticks. <laughs> hey, you make a good. <laughs> For Jason Termain, the drums bring him a great deal of enjoyment. Drumming is one of the things I enjoy. The way I look at it is if I'm making them smile and making them comfortable, then I'm, I'm helping them, right? No one understands the love of drumming more than Kevin. And knowing what these music lessons mean to his students has made the current pandemic even more difficult. As far as I'm concerned, I should never have been shut down. I am essential. There's nothing more essential than music. I mean, if you take away music, what would happen to people? I mean, I don't even understand. Like, you gotta just think of it that way. I mean, what would you do? So, I mean, and music has to be, like, and it's the, one of the most essential things in, uh, in life. I mean, music, rhythm, counting, timing, all that stuff. What's more essential than that? Our community will return after the break. We now return to our community. For the mind um, means music that is personal to an individual. Certified music therapist Courtney Radborn has made a career out of her belief that music is an essential part of life. It would be that it has like a positive impact 
and not necessarily just on the mind, but perhaps because music comes in through the ear into the mind as the first gateway to the body of it accessing the rest of us. If it's something that's important and meaningful to us, then you start to see other things happening within, within the body. Where shall we begin today? Uh, Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash, all right. Today she's bringing the healing power of music to clients living with disabilities in a long-term care facility. Her first session of the day is with Roger Tessier. Roger loves to sing. Um, and he loves to come up with little songs himself. It could be on how he's feeling that day or just random sounds. I just follow his lead on that. How do you like the maraca? It's fine. It's a place where he leads what he wants to do and it gives him that voice to do it. What may look like the simple act of singing actually affects multiple systems in the human body. It affects us on a very, very deep level, physiologically, emotionally, our ability to access memory. It's innate to us. It changes you physiologically, even without you knowing it. Woo! While Courtney uses her love of music in a therapeutic setting, Lucas Hanneman shares his with audiences around the world as a professional musician. He's understood music's transformative power from a young age. When I was a kid, starting off playing the guitar, it was definitely, for me, a, a really big form of, of therapy. I certainly uh, tend to be someone who's very optimistic and very upbeat, but when I was a kid, I mean, dealing with having a visual impairment, uh, I, I certainly, I could say, didn't have the most friends in the world. But uh, for me, music was always the thing that, it was always there. It was always like my best, best, best friend. Um, so playing the guitar was that thing I did when I came home from school, if I had a bad day, uh, or if I had a good day, but especially when I had a bad day, it would take me to a completely different world and a world in which I felt like I completely fit in. So when I was a kid, that was certainly what music brought to my life. And I don't know where I would be without it. I'm sure I would have grappled with, you know, suicidal tendency and all this kind of thing, you know, if, if I hadn't, if I hadn't have had music in my life. Not only did music help Lucas deal with his visual impairment, it also turned his life around and sent him in a new direction. Things had gotten so bad at school, I was always being picked on, I was always being bullied, and I was having such a rough time trying to make friends and keep friends. But I was also a little bit of the problem. I was certainly not the most friendly kid. I was a little bit mean, I'd say sometimes too, because I felt hurt by people. When I was going into grade seven, I had a teacher who taught me uh, Van Halen's Eruption, which is this big guitar solo um, off of the first Van Halen record. I went in and I, I played this eruption thing for my school and all of a sudden I became a very popular kid, you know, relatively speaking. And so from in my own experience, music really pulled me out of the darkness, so to speak, and, and I think made me completely uh, respected by my peers and, and kind of made me feel like I fit in, even though I was a little different still, but what, what good is life if we're not different, I think, you know, at the same time. The ability to share music with others is an important part of Courtney's work as well. Her client, Daniel Larrabee, has been able to take skills learned in music therapy out into his everyday life. A misconception a lot of people have is that you have to have musical training to engage in music therapy, which is not the case at all. You need not have any, any ability, any training, any knowledge about anything musical. That's where we come in. Daniel, uh, he has been able to, in the past, um, take some of the things that he's been working on and play it like a coffee house that we, we have here usually at least once or twice a year. He really enjoys being able to share that with other people. That was 
Great. Yeah. <clears throat> You're really taking the leap with that one. That's awesome. I really like the way you company me there. Awesome. And it is an esteem builder, and it is a big risk to go out and put yourself out there. So it's been a real confidence boost for, for those that do participate, say, in those particular activities. Okay, uh, let's try a cold, cold front. Whether you're on stage or in the audience, Lucas believes the live music atmosphere can be a healing experience all on its own. For the past seven years, he's been performing with his four-piece blues band, the Lucas Hanneman Express. For me, as someone who is a performer, I see live performance and music therapy as kind of being intertwined because I mean, I've had some amazing experiences performing or being at shows where all of a sudden I felt like a, li a weight was lifted completely off my shoulders. So, in my opinion, you know, the two can coexist. But I certainly have felt that when I've been to great live, live music events that it, it is certainly a form of therapy and I, and I, I might leave a concert feeling completely different than I did before the, the performance. I always feel like if ever I get frustrated or if ever I'm dealing with the unpredictability of this thing we call the music industry, um, then certainly, you know, the music is that thing, that place where I go. A cold, cold front is coming. I think we're getting somewhere with that, guy. Feels yeah. good. Twinkle, twinkle, little star on piano by Gary. After many years working as a music therapist, Courtney knows emotional release can arise in any session. There's a big emotional component um, to the work that we do, and that's why we try to do it as safely and ethically as we you can, and that's why we're trained to be able to handle different situations, because music is very powerful for people. Music is also powerful too in that it can evoke emotions but make it safe to express those emotions um, because you don't have to be like, today I'm feeling this because of this. It could be that we're writing a song and we're, we're using other ways to communicate instead of having to just bare your soul to somebody like traditional talk therapy, right? Providing clients like Gary McNabb with different ways to communicate is a central part of Courtney's work. Looking at the long term, again, with a lot of my clients, communication, the ability to find their voice. And that's why my company, The Healing Song, the slogan is a voice for everyone. And I think that's what we strive to do as, as music therapists. So a lot of people may be nonverbal. And the wonderful thing about music is you can speak through the instrument. Our community will return after the break. We now return to our community. Hey everybody, my name is Lucas Hanneman, and this is Megan Lawrence. Over the past few years, Lucas and his wife Megan have started performing together in a duet. Their shared musical abilities have helped them weather some of life's toughest storms. Just over a year ago at this point, both of my wife's parents passed away six months apart from each other. Uh, and so for both of us during that time, which was a very, very, very tough time, I don't know if we would have made it through like the couple of years leading up to those events and the times right around those events if it weren't for music. Back in 2009, Lucas also turned to music when his mother passed away from cancer. Right around that time, music was certainly the biggest form of, of therapy for me. I actually felt like I got to a different place as a musician because of what I was going through in my life. I feel like the, you know, life feeds the music we create and for me as an improviser, it certainly helps me express myself more and on a deeper level. And if it weren't for life experiences that were tough, I don't feel like I would be half the musician I am. So for me, dealing with really tough situations has certainly been, like they have been aided by music. 
In the end, Lucas believes it's music's ability to make us feel a range of emotions that makes it so powerful. Music should make us feel everything from anger to sadness to happiness to sheer joy, whatever it is. Just think about the music that makes you feel complete, that helps you heal. While these last few months have not been good, but I must be hopeful. I know I should. The most amazing thing about music is there is always music to fit a certain mood. Sometimes lifting yourself out of that state can be what you need to do by listening to something positive or sometimes dwelling. Music completely changed the course of my own life. So what would life be without music? I, I really don't know. I, I feel like life would be bland and dry and and, and boring and, and emotionless. <laughs> but that's because, for me, music is really everything. Music has had an equally important impact on Courtney's life. I was a musician before music therapy. I've always loved people. I've always loved music. I've seen from firsthand experience the power it can have on, like I said, being a life preserver for people. And I wanted to be able to, to do that for others. It's such an honor to be able to do this with, with people. And through this, uh, it's my hope that more people get educated about just how wonderful and accessible music therapy is for any age, any ability. Start with middle C. Back at Rock My House, okay. Wayne Richet's keyboard lessons represent the achievement of a lifelong dream. Back in the day in high school, I wanted to, to form a metal band, but it never happened, so this is kind of like trying to start up a metal band. I've been trying to like compose music, like metal and horror and Maybe Elton John like music. <laughs> Let's practice this guy. Horror is is what gets me. I'm not necessarily scared of horror. I just love what it makes me feel like. It's sort of like metal, you know, it gets out your aggression. No matter the genre, Kevin believes that nothing is more natural than music. To me, that's like the number one thing, music. I mean, everyone's born with rhythm. You're born with it. Like I say, your heart is a is a drum. You're born with you're born with music, right? I don't know. It just takes people a long time to wake up to it <laughs> to understand it. Keep that hand on, and then do your middle C from this one here. It um becomes like a like a conductor sort of like to let out my um frustration in a positive way and, right. and um, stress and I just feel like myself. <laughs> That's the hard one, right? That one with your left That's two at the same time. Music's very important to mankind. Look at that. You're getting it. Like without music, it'd be really sad and who wants that? Produced and directed by Tim Elm, writer Maureen Carter, narrator Jim Van Horn, director of photography Stefan Shemansky, camera operators Tim Elm, Stefan Shemansky, location audio Brian Mellersh, editor Jay Bond, production manager Gail Nakamoto, integrated described video specialist Ron Rickford, graphics Andrew Antonello, content development specialist Karen McGee, coordinating producer Jennifer Johnson, consulting producer Colette Vosberg, director of production Karen I. Director Programming, Brian Perdue. VP, Content Development and Programming, John Melville. President and CEO, David Arrington. Produced with the participation of Canada Media Fund. Produced by Mountain Road Productions. Copyright 2021, Accessible Media Inc.